two years ago, I tried to be Pokemon Eternal X and lost at the Elite Four. So today, I'm gonna redeem myself. I also didn't play on Insanity Mode, where gym leaders have Legendaries, Megas, all in the same team, so I'm gonna do that as well. I've beaten Ancestral X, so let's see how this compares to Wilting Y. If you like Nuzlocke content, then like and subscribe for more videos like this. As always, we gotta choose our starter. All three starter choices seem viable here, but I always like to go Fennekin. I think it's the best. It's been the most solid for me. I'ma stick with it. I find that it's always useful to have additional coverage for Viola early, since her team has a lot of grass coverage. After informing our mom that we'll be heading out on this Nuzlocke again, I can pass through the next few routes to see what Pokemon I can catch. This game makes sure to give you a wide assortment of Pokemon, and that's to your advantage. A lot of Pokemon in this game have been greatly buffed, especially in the early game. I actually only realized this huge mistake in editing, but the first encounter you get in the grass is guaranteed to be a Torchic holding a Blazikenite. But I wrote it off as not an encounter because I don't have Pokeballs yet. But as a matter of fact, you can actually buy Pokeballs in one of the shops to the side. But because I didn't realize this, I missed out on Blaziken this entire game, which made it extra hard on myself. In Wilting Y, you walk into Viola with five Pokemon on your team. And as you can probably expect, this early game is extremely tough. Any set of encounters less than perfect is gatekept out of the game. The starting set of Pokemon you see on screen right now instantly got wiped. It took more than a few dozen attempts until I finally got a set of Pokemon that can break past Viola. This attempt started off with Surskit missing an Icy Wind, giving us a free kill going into the battle. I think we're in for a treat. They just missed an Icy Wind, which I've never seen it do. It's always Rain Dance or uh, Sticky Web, so... Breaks and swaps in on Electro Web, but we can Flame Charge to recover our speed and break the Aka Berry, allowing Incinerate to kill on the next turn. This baits out the Smackdown from Dwebble, which we can pivot into Pikachu for to do massive damage with Electro Ball. I tried to swap in Rattata, but their damage roll for Flame Charge was way too high. Jesus Christ. Oh my god. Alright, well, there goes, uh, there goes Rattata. <laughs> Can't really use it anymore. I sacrifice Rattata and paralyze Larvesta with T-Wave to offset the speed increase. I then swap over to Fletchinder, but take huge damage from Stealth Rocks. Peck is able to pick out the Larvesta, but since we're losing momentum in this battle, I need Fletchinder to be sacked. Let's incinerate. We're in Blaze. Beautiful. We can incinerate for huge damage and possibly kill 50-50. Oh my god, so many attempts. Four hours in for a single trainer. I can move on towards Lumio City by catching a Togepi in Route 4. Good Pokemon for sure, but I rarely end up using it since I don't really know how to use Togekiss to its full potential. After beating Professor Sycamore in his triple battle, I can pick up a Kanto starter. Alright, I think the answer is obvious, right? Our good ol' Bulbasaur. As I continue to move on, there is a valid encounter in the Static Snorlax on Route 7. Normally, this is your encounter and you move on, but I'm going to implement a swap clause here from Ancestral X, where I'm allowed to pick out on Pokemon from the grass. Since the Snorlax is forced upon you, it takes away from the variety that was put on Route 7. Some people play with only the Snorlax, some say the Snorlax doesn't count and you roll for the grass. This is how I'm doing it, so I'm also going to pick up a second Pokemon in Swablu. The connecting cave gives a Metatite, which is a personal favorite of mine, but it's god-awfully slow so you won't be seeing it much. I can also pick up a fishing rod in Ambret Town and head back over to Parfume Palace to fish up the 35% Dratini. Oh wow! Oh wow! 60% Feebas, 35% Dratini. I thought I was getting the Feebas, but I'm not going to complain about this. Before going up north to Silage City, we need to head to Route 9 to where I can pick out another two Pokemon. The first is Hippopotas, a decent Pokemon that'll be good for Grant. The second one is Rhyhorn and Glittering Cave a pretty standard Pokemon in my Nuzlocke. We also have to save the scientist in the cave for him to revive our Pokemon, but take a look at how we destroyed these grunts in the tag battle. Okay. Oh, get fucked. Defiant and competitive. Get absolutely fucked. You're so cringe. Shut the fuck up and get out of here. Don't ever talk to me again. Don't ever touch Pokemon again. I decided to go with the Sail Fossil from the Scientists. Between Tyrant and Amora, a lot of you wouldn't pick Amora because of the typing, but I'm looking past that, and Amora doesn't honestly seem that bad. The last Pokemon is Onyx from Rock Smashing in Silage City. He evolves into Steelix quite early, but for now, he won't be doing much. It's gonna be hard regardless of what we do, so we kinda just have to 
deal with it. First things first, we're gonna put both of them to sleep, or at least try to. Okay, this one this one matters the most, but the other one's okay. <laughs> you potion using scumbag. Giggle sets up the sand, and Solrock sets the screens. I start by putting them both to sleep with Sleep Powder and Yawn. Cut knocks out the Solrock and swaps for Rhyhorn on the right to tank the arrow's sky attack. Dig comes up to kill the Gigalith, and I expected the Woodhammer to hit my Venusaur, but they surprise me with a kill into Hippo. Into Hippo? Oh shit, I did not see that there. I bring out Snorlax to yawn the Pseudo Wudo, and Amoro's Refrigerate Return is able to knock out the arrow. Again, I fully expected Woodhammer to aim towards my Snorlax since that should be priority over Amora, but I predicted it wrong again and Amora faints to the hands of Pseudo Wudo. Pseudo Wudo falls asleep on the next turn due to Yawn, which is just in time for Petal Dance and Force Pump from Metatite to double up into Relicant. Next turn, Petal Dance one shot Pseudo Wudo, and High Jump Kick deletes Cray Dilly to earn me the second badge. A little disappointing since this could have easily been a flawless fight, but we've still got a lot of game in front of us, so there's no point wasting time moping. Now with Strength active, I can pick up the TM's Thunder Wave and Aerial Ace. I can then go into the grass of Route 10 to catch a Golette. A few of the Flare Grunts ambush me along the trails, but nothing we can't handle. There's also a Thunderstone that I can pick up to evolve my Pikachu into Raichu. After chasing down the Flare Grunts in Geosenge Town, we're challenged by Karina to a quick test of our skills. Alright, somehow I don't have a kill for this thing, except for exactly Blaze. <laughs> so I, I just, I had to, I had to pre-damage myself. <laughs> Luckily, it all works out fine. Route 11 has the potential to give us something strong for Karina's gym fight. She has both a Terrakion and Lucario on our team, so something with bulk or intimidate is ideal. Unfortunately, I get neither, and I get the 5% Dedenne. Certainly not bad, but it overlaps with my other Pokemon. Reflection Cave has a lot of trainers to fight, and it's impossible to dodge all of them. The game is almost entirely undocumented except for gym leaders, but I found a way around it. If I search up which trainer is next on Bullopedia, I can type in their name into the damage calc to find out their full team since this game must have the code that modifies their team. So after spending hours going back and forth between the calculator and Bullopedia, I can slowly work my way through Reflection Cave. The goal was to save my encounter for floor B1 because that's where a lot of the ghost types reside, perfect for the Karina matchup. Unfortunately, I mistakenly step on a shadow on the ground which causes an ambush Pokemon to drop down. Oh shit. I mean, Ferrocede's good though. I ran into the fucking... Okay, I mean, Ferrocede's good. Uh, but it's, it's no mystery of this, but it's good. It's good. We'll take it. I also fish up a Pokemon in the city for one last encounter, which happens to be Shelder, so you definitely won't be seeing him in this fight. Before I can even think about Karina, we first need to fetch her in the Tower of Mastery. Here, her grandfather tells us about the powers of Mega Evolution, and Serena grows a pair of balls to challenge us. I lead with my Dark-type Arbok against Meowstic to crunch and kill. Then I use my Furco Furfruit to slowly chip down her Kangaskhan's health, then swap back to Arbok to pick up the kill to Poison Jab. Her Dragonair is stopped by my Dedenne as it tries to Dragon Tail us. Pixelate Tri-Attack turns it into a Fairy move, dealing huge damage to feign the Dragonair. I send in Snorlax for the special book against Greninja, and finish it off with a turn. Finally, the last Pokemon is Guts Flareon. Unfortunately, it's countered by my Eevee Light Rhyhorn, and we can finish her off by drilling her. Unlike the other fighting type gym leaders, Karina takes a modern spin at the gym design by making it her skating rink. She starts with a Focus Sash Breloom that needs breaking. Luckily, Dedenne with Volt Switch can break the Sash and swap into Venusaur, who can't be put to sleep with Spore. Venusaur also baits Psyshock from Gallade. Delphox can come in to resist the Psychic Attack and retaliate with our own Psyshocks to kill in two turns. We have to play into this crit here. Okay, nice. Nice. Beautiful. Beautiful. That's all we needed. That's all we needed. Her Hawlucha gets paralyzed by Nuzzle to cripple its speed. This allows me to Parabolic Charge to kill and regain HP. This is perfect because it puts us out of Sucker Punch range from the next Pangoro, where Pixelate Tri-Attack can chain into another kill. She saves her Mega for last, and I swap into my special wall in Snorlax. We're not in crit range, so we can safely get off Bulldoze to lower the Lucario's speed. Then I can swap into Delphox on the resisted Flash Cannon, and hit back with Mystical Fire for the kill. I meet back up with Karina at the top of Tower of Mastery, where she introduces us to Mega Evolution, and we're gifted with Mega Lucario. Definitely a great addition to the team. Over on Route 12, we do have the option to obtain the gift Lapras as our encounter. Lapras traditionally is a very good Pokemon, but looking at my team composition now, it's just not what I'm looking for. 
I need something faster and something that will be useful for Ramos. So say hello to Tentacool. We can skip all the trainers by riding the Gogo to the end and head straight to Kumarine City. At the piers of Kumarine, a shopkeep sells us a bunch of Mega Stones. I can only buy the Metachamite for now, but as we do get other Megas, I'll definitely be coming back. I also make sure to go down a bit to Route 13 to catch a Dust Cloud Pokemon. Drillbert won't be doing anything for Ramos, but it'll be a great addition for Clement. Just before heading into the gym, we're stopped by Serena for another rival battle. She hasn't changed her team since the Tower of Mastery, so this fight is equally as easy. Okay, here's Ramos. There's gonna be a triple uh, rot rotation battle, so this can get quite tricky, but I think I have this down. So, despite being a mega Pokemon, I think they can send in Venusaur and just Mega Evolve off rip. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna swap into Farfetch to dodge, and we're gonna Brave for it to kill. So we're gonna dodge it and then we can attack. Flying gem that we picked up earlier. Beautiful. Instantly wipes it out, no need to worry about it. The only question is can their Ferrothorn kill me? Because if it can't, then I just go for it. Well, I'm gonna go into and hit a poison jab. Yeah, that's what I thought. That's what I thought. It being faster is not that big of an issue. Dude, that did a lot of damage. Hold on. Yeah, Superior can kill me then. Can I kill the Superior with my Delphox at this health? So let's Psy Shock the. Okay, that's fine. I believe. Okay, I'm pretty sure that now that it's Swift Swim, it takes priority over the Superior, so it's gonna stay Ludicolo. Because the Superior in the back also sees a kill, so it just depends which one does more damage. Swap out of the Delphox so that we're, we're healthy. Leaf Storm is really, really weird. Alright, pretty sure they're gonna go Water Move into my Pharaoh. Let's go Poison Jab into their Ludicolo. What a prediction. Okay, so I'm pretty sure with the Torterra out, we can as safely assume that it's gonna go for an Earthquake. Okay, Woodhammer's okay. I really wanna, wanna attack this, but I need to consider that they swap into Ferrothorn, and we take Iron Barb's damage. Honestly, they could also swap to Superior. I think we just Acrobatics here. Sure, we'll take it. <laughs> I don't know why they didn't swap. Let's go here. Yeah, okay. I think that's it. I think we win, right? Yeah, Mystical Fire kills. Beautiful. Easy. Well, it got pretty sticky at, at the Ludicolo, but that's fine. Superior is kind of is very scary if you let it set up too much, but thankfully my Delphox was faster. Now that I have the plant badge in my possession, I head down to Lumios Badlands to clear out Team Flare. And despite my team not looking too bad for only four deaths, this is probably the first gauntlet of tough trainers. These Team Flare grunts are truly blind. This is because in Bulbapedia, they're all listed as Team Flare Grunts with no unique names. So in the damage calc, I can't tell which team belongs to which Grunt, so I just have to fight them all blind. Luckily, I do have a decent backup strategy. By leading with my fast Adene, I can always Volt Switch out to deal damage while swapping out for a better type matchup. This keeps our momentum in the battle, and I can keep up toe-to-toe -to -toe against the foe's Pokemon. At the end of the Gauntlet of Trainers is Flare Admin Aliana. She leads with a bulky, bulky Metagross that loves to set up screens. I can just pre-damage Delphox into Blaze though, and blast right through with Mystical Fire. I swap over to my bulky Snorlax on their Volcanion, but I accidentally misclick in a Belly Drum, cutting my HP in half and putting myself in Burn Recoil range. Belly Drum? Wait. I did the order wrong. <laughs> I, I... Oh fuck, I meant to... Okay, sorry, I was supposed to... Anyway. Thankfully, I can recover from this position by swapping to Venusaur. Venusaur Mega Evolves and puts the Volcanion to sleep. This would allow me to get the kill for free. Altaria decently walled the Arcanine, and I can set up Dragon Dances to boost my speed and damage. Bulldoze hits the Arcanine and removes it from battle. I can also manipulate the Dreadigan into Dragon Rushing into Togekiss. 
Here, I can encore and pick up another free kill with Disarming Voice. Steelix tanks the Archeops hits and Gyro Balls for the revenge kill. Her last Pokemon is Mega Heracross with Skill Link, Multiple Hit Attacks. Venusaur can come in on the Arm Thrust and we can put it to sleep with Sleep Powder. Blaze, uh, Mystical Fire kills. Easy, okay, we're good. Whew, okay. Easy. Now okay. with the Gauntlet done, I can head down to Lumio City to prepare for another gym fight. In the meantime, I go around to pick up some items, but eventually I do start preparing my team. So Clement, it's either super good or super bad. And we gotta play it like turn by turn because there's so much that happens in every turn. Uh, we're in a Sandstorm because we want to boost Exegirl speed with Sand Rush. So hopefully the Raichu sees like a Focus Blast and Hydro Pump into Exca. Otherwise we're just wasting a turn. Soak is really weird. They're definitely going to discharge for Fer Ferrothorn, so we'll do that. And we can dig the Lantern. We're going to swap into you on the left. Something for the discharge. We'll go Lantern in the middle. Okay, that knocks out their lantern. Yeah, discharge. Okay, this is not an issue. And then the stun fist, whatever it does, it's weak. So, yeah, that's not gonna do anything to me. In this situation, we're gonna go Mega Giga Drain into Thunderous. Uh, no, the Raichu. And we're also going to Bubble Beam into the Raichu. We can Strength with uh, Rock Incense to kill the Thunderous, and we outspeed it as well. How does that not line up? I swear to God. Uh, it's a hundred and one percent. It's a hundred and one to one hundred seventeen. Right. So the math is wrong. Somewhere. Go Giga Drain into the Stun Fisk. We'll protect our middle. And we will try attack with Pixelate into the Ampharos. I honestly don't know where we went wrong there. It we are holding Rock Incense, right? I don't know. It's it's just weird sometimes. I don't know. I'll probably find out like in editing, but who knows? With Clamont down, we can meet up with Professor Sycamore in the Lysander Cafe. Seriously, I don't know why he can't tell that this is definitely the antagonist. As I step out to the next route, I cannot catch a break because Serena challenges me to yet another fight. This time, however, she's changed up her team, and she somewhat poses a challenge. Leading with Meowstic, I make sure to remove Intimidate from Arbok to not activate her competitive, and Crunch to pick up the first kill. I can then swap to Rhydon, who, despite getting burned from Flare Blitz, can still deal enough damage to outpace the Flareon's damage. Dedenne's Pixelate tri attack deals solid damage to Dragonair, but leaves me on low HP, so I have to swap. Steelix with Gyro Balls confidently stalls a Clefable, and I swap to Ferrothorn to counter Greninja. Here, I gotta play into a crit, and they do manage to get it with Flying Jam Acrobatics. With Ferrothorn low, I have to sack a Pokemon to regain momentum for the rest of the fight. Okay, I think what I'm, what I'm gonna have to do is sack. If anything dies, it's Arbok or Dedenne. Ultimately, I have to choose between Arbok and Dedenne, since the rest are too valuable. I send in Dedenne because I know it's not an E4 Pokemon. This allows me to bring out Lucario who can survive an Acro and Power Up Punch to kill. Finally, Adaptability Aura Sphere blasts through the Kangaskhan to mark the end of the fight. That was definitely an avoidable loss, but at least for my troubles, this route next up offers me some reconciliation. Okay! We do need a better ground type. I will take this. I, I will take this. 
The sixth gym, Valerie, is, for all intents and purposes, just a filler gym before more plot development. Since I already have a few good steel and poison types, I'm able to easily work through all her trainers without much planning at all. Her gym basically copies Sabrina's and Heartgold Soul Silver, so once I reach the last room with Valerie, we can engage in our sixth gym fight. Her battle is just a single battle, but I feel like this would have worked better as a double or triple battle. Her starting Klefki swaggers my Delphox for confusion, but we're holding a Persian Berry. This allows me to chain a kill into Klefki and the next Grand Bull with Psychic. She sends out a Zoomerill for the Water Fire matchup, so I swap into my Grass to resist it. I put it to sleep with Sleep Powder and recover any health back with Giga Drain. I save my Mega Evolution for now to proc Thick Fat, reducing the fire damage. This lets me get off a Toxic to deal massive damage on the next turn with boosted Venoshocks. Sylveon gets solidly walled by my Ferrothorn, and I can weaken it down with Gyro Balls. Then I swap over Tentacruel to pick up the kill with Poison Jab. Finally, her last Pokemon is Mega Mawile. As much as a Mega improves its stats, it's still just a Mawile, and Heavy Slams from Steelix can two-shot to earn the victory. As I exit the gym building, I head north to the Pokeball Factory where again it's a takeover by Team Flare. Shauna and gang try to enter first to see what's up, but immediately get chased out by the guard. This distracts them and allows me to enter the building first. Despite having 5 grunts here, most of them are avoidable since you need to go out of your way to enter their line of sight. So I can just click on the control panel to reverse the conveyor belt and go straight to the admins at the end. This fight coming up is one of the toughest battles you see in this game. It's a 12v12 multi-battle against you and your rival. This can get quite hard to navigate since you have to deal with so much coverage, but I have a decently comprehensive plan. Since a lot of them share the same weaknesses, I need to play this battle aggressive. I lead with my Delphox on the left against the lead of Dewblade and Darkrai. This might seem suicidal, but after doing the calcs, I can almost guarantee they'll attack the Meowstic. Mystical Fire can immediately remove the Dewblade, so on the next turn, I can safely anticipate dark moves coming from both sides. Here, I swap over to Lucario, Dark Pulse kills the Meowstic, but the Night Slash hits Lucario with Justify to also gain an attack boost. From here, I can Mega Evolve to gain adaptability and deal big damage to Drapion with Aura Sphere. Since Flareon outspeeds Drapion and I outspeed Darkrai, Power Up Punch faints the Darkrai for an attack boost, and Flare Blitz from Flareon kills Drapion. I, I can probably kill the Haxorus. Fuck, I took off Ice Punch. I mean, I can also kill the Toxicroak, but I think it's just worth just protecting one turn. Just to see. At least so that the Flareon can die and bring out a better Pokemon. Or that. That also works. That also works. Actually, both of them happen. Protecting pays off and brings out Magmortar. Since I know Dragonair is baiting the Dragon move from Haxorus, I can focus on the Magmortar, hitting a close combat to knock it out. I need to kill the one that doesn't attack Clefable. So I think this is another turn where I have to just protect. Hydreigon does have Flash Cannon, but what can I do about that? Poison Jab. Oh my god, you're fucked. Okay, so the. F okay, so Hydreigon attacked me. Interesting. Yet again, Protect proves useful. Power Up Punch kills Hydreigon as Poison Jab from Hacks confirms a kill on Greninja. On the right side comes out Mega Manectric, and I know for a fact it's targeting Greninja, so I hit another Power Up Punch to kill Haxorus. As the left side sends out Chandelure, I finally have to swap out a Lucario since it only has fighting moves. Swampert comes in and protects against Energy Ball from Chandelure. This lets Kangaskhan pick up the knock on Chandelure, and I can Earthquake to finish off the Manectric. Kangaskhan also goes down, leaving me in a 1v1 against the rest of the left side. I swap Lucario back in to kill the Bisharp and Luxray, and Delphox can outspeed and kill the Mega Pinsir. I gotta say, after having played Ancestral X, this game seems to be a cut below in terms of difficulty. The AI doesn't seem too scrambled, so I'm usually able to make the right predictions. Now that we're slowly moving through the mid-game, we can finally pick out some more encounters and quite a few of them. Route 15 gives me a horde of Murkrow, so I make sure to catch the fastest one. Then below in the Lost Hotel, I can Static Pull an Electric Pokemon and Magneton. Finally, I can come across Ms. Drevis in the Grass of 16. With encounters caught, I finally reach Dendamil Town, which is a huge checkpoint. The move reminder is located here, so I take a moment to really level up my Pokemon and flush out their movesets, learning TMs, and moves from their move reminder. After fleshing out their- oh, that's such a weird word. <laughs> After redesigning my Pokemon's moveset, I hear about Team Flare's disturbances up north in Frost Cavern. The cave gives Bergmite, so nothing too special, and a lot of the trainers here can be dodged. After taking literally an hour to solve the ice puzzles, I reach the deepest room to find Mabel harassing an Obama Snow. We're just gonna kill this with a Gyro Ball. It's gonna take uh, Iron Barb's damage, which breaks its own Sash, and this kills. Beautiful. This is gonna be resisted, we outspeed, and we can kill with Psychic. 
kill with Psychic. And this, we take damage, so it's gonna double our damage and it's gonna kill it. Bang, okay, nice. From here, it's gonna go Electivire for either Close Combat or Fire Blast. Doesn't matter though, Tentacle can take them both. And then we go into, this baits our Wild Charge. We go into Swampert. Here we Earthquake. Crit actually doesn't kill us there, so that's fine. Perfect. We'll Rain Dance. So eight sunny days first, then we rain dance, activating our swift swim. We can kill this with aqua tail. Okay, and we're still swift swim, so we're faster. Aqua tail kills. Perfect, easy, just like that. Not even difficult. I escape rope out of there and head out to the next city. In the meantime, Route 17 gives me another ice type Pokemon. Damn, really got the shittiest Pokemon in the world. Before I can even step foot into the city, I get a call on my Hollow Caster from Serena telling me that she wants to battle. Like seriously, can you leave me alone for one second? The movesets are mostly unchanged, so I can still play this slowly to win. Shadow Ball straight up, offered kills. Oh wow, why is our level so low? I prepped for the one after this one. I, I was gonna say why the level jump was so high. Guts Flareon goes down to a combination of Fly and Extreme Speed from Dragonite, and I encore their Dragonite into Dragon Rush with my Togekiss. This is to prevent weakness policy, and Double Moonblast shatter the multi-scale to kill. I swap to Ferrothorn on Greninja, who should be a perfect counter, but Dark Pulses cause it to flinch every time. Thankfully, Life Orb Chips knocks itself out on the last hit. Tentacruel Poison jabs the Clefable, and Miss Magius can stall the Mega Kangaskhan out of Sucker Punches, then hit a super boosted Moonblast. Seriously, she's gotta learn how to change up her team. Absolutely gorgeous, by the way. I come to her with a set of solid Pokemon, but no concrete plan. All of my Pokemon are suited for maximum coverage and counter her Pokemon, but the nature of the rotation makes it extremely unpredictable. First of all, rotate, Mega Evolve, Fake Out. Perfect. It goes to uh, Deoxys and Fake Out breaks the Sash. This is exactly what we're looking for, so Night Slash from Haunchcrow. That's fine. Fuck, I forget. Yeah, we, we need to keep in mind that they do use uh, I, 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 they're not gonna, they're probably gonna attack me here. So let's Sucker Punch. Yeah. Let's go in, let's swap into our uh, Delphox. Rock Polish. Ooh, that's gonna be a little bit concerning. We can swap over to my Levitate Miss Magius. And, okay. I guess they don't want it then. We're gonna be looking into a Meteor Mash from the Metagross. In that case, Meteor Mash, we go Flamethrower with Delphox again. Perfect. Ice Punch is okay. Beautiful. Okay. What I'm gonna do is go Deli Bird here. Or, okay. Hmm. They go to their Mega Metacham. Yeah, let's go Miss Magius and let's Shadow Ball here. Yeah, they're definitely not gonna swap back to their Claydol, so. This is a free kill for us. Beautiful. Okay, I just need I just I just need to worry about that Claydol. I just need to get damage onto it somehow. Okay, it's Psy Shock incoming into my Miss Magius slot. Let's go Haunch Crow to resist whatever. It could also calm mine, so I'm really hoping they go. Sorry, perfect, perfect, perfect. In that case, I'm gonna go extreme speed with my Deli Bird. If they swap to Ladius, perfect, we get the kill. Because this is refrigerate with icicle, uh, icicle plate. Perfect. Okay. Yeah, that Claydol is really fucking bulky, so we had to be very, very careful the way we play around it. As soon as I exit the gym, we receive news on the Hollow Caster about Lysander's sinister plan. Serena suggests that we head to the Lysander Cafe to check on Lysander. This is another section with many, many grunt battles. I lost my Dedene, but I can still do the Volt Switch strategy with Magnezone. 
On the other hand, Lysander's team is given to us, and his team is a little unrefined. Mega Medicham starts with a fake out to break the sash, then to outspeed with Zen Headbutt to remove the Mian Chao. I can counter the Haunch Crow with Magnezone using T Bolts to get the kill. As he swaps in his Gyarados for EQ, I pivot through Haunch Crow to dodge, then over to Cloyster. Now, Cloyster's only level 67 because we need to underspeed the Gyarados. So we Shell Smash. Perfect. It hits us first, and then we Defense Drop. Beautiful. From here, Rock Blast kills with Skill Link. Perfect. And then we can chain all the kills into the rest of their Pokemon. Beautiful. Easy! Just like that. Just like that. Cloyster is gonna co Cloyster is gonna start coming into play slowly and slowly, and it's gonna be very, very useful. If that seemed a little easy, trust me, his team gets a lot more insane later on. Before even giving me a moment to breathe, Aliana's on my ass. Thankfully, her team is also unchanged since the last time. Delphox can still melt through the Metagross, and Lantern can pivot on the Steamer option with Water Absorb. I Volt Switch out to Miss Magius to do damage and dodge Earth Power. This lets me T-Bolt for free, deleting Volcanion. I circle round to Swampert to set up a Rain Dance to boost my damage and speed. Aqua Tail can hit the Golurk to bring in the next Pokemon. I pivot through Rhydon to take the Gunk Shot, then over to Ms. Magius to dodge the Dragon move. Strength from Rhydon easily 1v1s the foe's Archeops, and Delphox can swap in on the final Mega Heracross and Flamethrower to beat her for the last time. Not too long after, Mabel does the same challenging us to a battle. Her team is slightly different, but it only makes her easier. Medicham leads again to fake out Zen Headbutt, and Swampert completely walls the Electivire. Karakasa's AI always forces it to use Shell Smash, but it still ends up being slower due to Swift Swim and also ends up dying. Weavile also underspeeds and just dies. I expected the Dug Trio to Sunny Day first, but it just goes straight to Memento. Thankfully, with Rain still up, Houndoom is useless and also just dies. Winning against Mabel forces her to hand us the Elevator Key. I can make my way down to the bottom to find the secret scientist Zerosic. He is the true scientist behind Team Flare's plans. Crobat, usually, well, actually, I don't have any counter except for Refrigerate Extreme Speed. <laughs> this is so lucky from me, so we're gonna take it, and yeah, we're gonna roll with it. We're gonna protect to see what it does, although I'm pretty sure it doesn't matter regardless of what it does. Yeah, Rock Slide is fine. We're gonna go right on. Eviolite right on. It's Choice Scarf, so it's locked in. We can just Earthquake to kill. Lumberry, just in case it does uh, put us to sleep. And Psychic to kill. Nice and easy. It's just a swap in kill, swap in kill, swap in kill. It's probably gonna knock off here, actually. That's fine. Moonblast kills. And now it's Flamethrower incoming. We go into back into um, Delphox. And we can kill with a flamethrower. And this one, we can also kill with a flamethrower. It's just that easy. Just that easy. Yep. Just goes like that. Just goes After like that. being tricked into pressing the button, their master plan goes forth anyway, so it's up to us to head down to Geosench Town. Inside the real Flare HQ, oh, Lysander oh, wants no a rematch. Save. Damn. A fake out into... Uh, Fake out into Magius on the superpower. And then we kill with Moonblast. We're gonna put someone we're gonna put on some additional chip with Leech Seed. Okay, there goes down the Gyarados. Here comes Garchomp, going for Fire Blast. Tentacle perfectly baits, heals HP, and we bait Earthquake into the Cloister, which is, it's the best that we can do. They're not gonna crit us, so they can't kill us with the lineup of Earthquake into, uh, what's it called? They can't get the kill on that. Perfect. Now we're outspeeding. We can kill with Icicle Crash. This breaks past Yachi Berry. Beautiful. T 
Team Flare HQ is a huge boss rush. Every single trainer here is an admin packing powerful Pokemon all in multi-battles. Since I have to play each fight blind, the key here is to play ultra safe, bringing in bulky Pokemon and wide coverage. It's important that you rely on Serena to do most of the work here since they can deal damage or take hits for you. It's actually not as hard as you think as long as you make switches and play defensively correctly. And eventually, I do make it to the very bottom. The final few grunts at the end even have legendaries on their teams, but those end up being single battles, so I can always go back to the old strategy. So in record time, I find myself at Lysander again. Alright, Fairy Aura Xerneas. We can just simply outspeed and knock it out with Meteor Mash. They went first? Okay. Geomancy's fine. Doesn't do anything to us. Min Xiao as well. We can just close combat or close combat to kill. Beautiful. Okay, Garchomp. It's gonna go Earthquake. We go into Delibird. Perfect. Extreme speed with Refrigerate. This kills past the, uh, yeah. Perfect. And now that Balloon's popped, we go, we go with the uh, Earthquake to kill. Bug Buzz, we go to here. Yep. That's fine with us. And we Brave Bird. Oh, wait, what? It's faster? Oh, shit. Damn. Okay, that sucks. Oh, fuck. Uh, I, I'm being too uncautious. I'm being too uh, uncautious right now. Okay, um, right now it's going to go for... It, well, it's going to Mega Evolve Waterfall. Thunder Wave this thing. Yeah. To cripple its speed, and then we have other solutions. Lucario, it, it's gonna go crunch, which we're double resist, quad resist. Yeah, 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 okay, we're safe, we're safe, we're safe. That's not a crit? Holy fuck. Close combat to kill. Jesus Christ. Yeah, losing Farfetch'd, it's like whatever. I didn't really use it much, so. Now that I've cleared through Pokemon story mode, I can head onwards towards Snowbell City. I Magnapull a Durant, but I get caught up with my rivals. All three of my rivals want to fight me in a mini Elite 3. Shauna starts us off with Sylveon leading at the start of the battle. I can simply Mega Evolve Lucario and Meteor Mash to remove it. Swampert can come in on the Rapid Ash's Flare Blitz. I Rain Dance to boost our speed, then EQ to kill. Power Whip incoming hits Ferrothorn, and I select for Leech Seed to try and stall. Its HP pool is humongous, so... Well, not humongous, but it's big, so... We, we, can, we can do a lot of damage here. Oh shit, okay, plan, plan subverted, plan subverted, I forgot that was a thing. Thankfully, I can pivot over to Miss Magius from Moonblast and kill this way. But I've deviated from my plan a little bit, plus we've lost a lot of unnecessary health. She hands me Chestnut for free, and I can stall the Lapras with Ferris when leads you. Finally, Lucaro can outspeed Chinchino for the first win. I'll need to play the second battle more carefully since I don't have a lot of health on my team. I start off strong by hitting Strength on the Talon Flame. I then set up Stealth Rocks with Ferrothorn and burn Lilligant with Mystical Fire. Tentacool perfectly counters his Ludicolo, which brings in Kingdra. I made sure to set up Toxic Spikes on their field, which guarantees damage, but it's still very scary. I make a couple swaps between Ferrothorn and Tentacool, but throughout the swaps, it got to set up Dragon Dances. My only solution now is to kill Bullet Punch from Lucario, but seeing as how it's a resisted move, I need to secure more damage on it first. The rain's still not letting up. Ah, oh, it's... Damp Rock, that's why. Okay, I think I have to sack Tentacruel here. This thing's set up way too much. Fuck, okay. All right, goodbye, Tentacruel. You, you, did, you did great. You did absolutely great, by the way, so. It sees the kill. We go Ferrothorn. It does, it won't kill me. It won't kill me. We have to live a crit. Oh, what? Why'd you go for that? I'm a fairy. 
what? Okay, maybe I don't know this AI as good as I thought I did. I needed one more turn of poison or barbs, but okay, that sucks. That really sucks. Close combat kills this. I just did the math. Oh my god, you're kidding, right? I swear to god, if I cannot kill this fucking Crawdont. Okay, we're still good. Oh my god, okay. So that's what, two Pokemon down? Tentacruel and Pharaoh? We can't use them for Trevor then. Thankfully for Trevor, he heals us first, which turns us back to a normal 1v1. I go through a series of switches on Raichu, which eventually leads with a kill from Bullet Punch. Lucario can then chain kills into the rest of Trevor's team. With these two losses, we find ourselves in Snowbell City. The next few areas and Victory Road are the last encounters we have in this run, so I need to make them count. Ludicolo is guaranteed on Route 21. On Route 20, I try my chances at Gallade or Zoroark, but I come up just short. No, ah, uh, man. Not Zoroark. Not Zoroark. Gothitelle is actually decent in this game since it gets access to a lot of trickery, but it's not Elite Four caliber. Finally, in Pokemon Village, I can secure myself a legendary Pokemon. There are a lot of options here, from the legendary trios to the big legendaries. I try to static pull either Raikou or Zapdos, since those are insanely good for the Elite Four. Static pull, come on. I mean... I mean... I mean... Entei will not be joining us for the Elite Four. He is good, however, for Wolfric. Wolfric is a tricky triple battle. He leads with Aurora's to set the hail and two powerful ice types. The biggest issue is the Frostlath with Snow Cloak and Bright Powder for a total of 30% chance to miss. We're gonna use Telekinesis to bypass the Snow Cloak and the Bright Powder. We're going to power up, well, Mega Evolve, power up punch the Aurora's. It's okay if Aurora's protects. That's fine, because we outspeed and kill it. And we Mystical Fire that Jinx. Again, we outspeed and kill it because it's Dry Skin. So we don't have to worry about any uh, Lovely Kiss, nothing like that. We're Casib... Yeah, okay, that's fine. We're Casib Berry on... Gothitelle to prevent the... Uh, what's it called? Okay, we're gonna have to do a little bit of work here. From here, we go Durant in the middle and swap Entei on the left and Venusaur on the right. In this position, we're set up for kills on all three Pokemon. Iron Head on Aurorus, Flare Blitz on Frostlass, and Leaf Storm into Lapras. This brings out his last two Pokemon, Mega Obama Snow and Curum White. Flare Blitz can thankfully one-shot the Obama Snow, and we get a lucky flinch on the Curum, confirming the kill and securing the eighth badge. The freeze was something we had to play into. I, I literally could not do anything about it. That's a pretty bad loss, I will say. Mega Lucario is definitely an E4 contender. It's not all bad news though. In Victory Road, I can guarantee a Dino Horde by using Sweet Scent on the first cave. Hydreigon is definitely Elite Four worthy, so I make sure to pick out the fastest one. Speaking of Victory Road, this is just another huge Bosch Rush. Every single one of their teams is packed with a Legendary or Mega, or both but I can still use the same Bulbapedia strategy to search up their teams and plan accordingly. There's also a final battle with Serena. She's got a similar team, but added a Victini on her team. Luckily for me, it's a simple Swift Swim to outspeed an EQ to kill. The rest of her team goes down like usual, so in no time at all, five hours, I'm at the Elite Four. If you've made it this far, then please like and subscribe. My channel has a lot more Nuzlocke content like this, so check it out. Stuff like this takes a long time to make, and this Elite Four is no different. I spent so many hours planning and came to a perfect set of Pokemon. Politoed and Swampert are obvious picks. Drizzle sets up the rain, and Swampert gets a speed boost while also just being a tank of a Pokemon. I also add on Hydreigon, Miss Magius, and Togekiss. All of them are powerful complements to Swampert that can dish out big damage while not being affected by Earthquake. The last Pokemon though is Steelix, and you'll see why I picked it. Alright, first, Malva in a double battle. Alright, this is obviously going to be a Sun team, leading with uh, Heat Rock, Drought, Ninetales, and Reshiram. We're gonna lead with our slower Politoed so that we get the rain off second, which allows us to have our Swampert Swift Swim. We're Assault Vest to direct attacks into Swampert and not our Politoed, 
we're gonna immediately swap into Miss Magius, and we're going to protect my Swamp Birds. So this should be Draco Meteor into my left side, Solar Beam into my right side. That's fine, perfect. In this position, with the rain up, Swampert is faster than both of their Pokemon, and we, we can outspeed and kill it with Earthquake, but we don't do enough damage. Miss Magius is Choice Scarfed. We're going to sw uh, swagger our own Swampert, and it's actually faster than Swampert. So we get this Swagger off first, giving us an attack boost. Lumberry cures our confusion, and then with the attack boost, then we can kill both of their Pokemon with Earthquake. Beautiful. There should be Chandelure and something else. Okay. Uh, Heatran. Okay. So we're looking at Flash Cannon and Solar Beam, probably. We're going to swap into uh, Hydreigon. And we're going to Waterfall the Heatran to just immediately kill it. We don't want to deal with it. Ho-Oh, we're going to Dark Pulse, the Chandelure, and we're going to Waterfall, the Ho-Oh, to kill. Okay, nice, beautiful. It's Dark Pulse. Nice. Uh, with a Charizard coming out, it's going to Mega Evolve to give it Drought. What we're going to do is Double Protect. Here, we're going to swap in Politoed, bringing in the rain. We're going to outspeed the Charizard with uh, Swift Swim, and we're going to kill. Or I guess dynamic uh, speed doesn't work like that, but it's okay. It already used up the Solar Beam on the first turn when it had Drought up, so that's fine. Perfect. Perfect. Perfectly planned. Here is Seabold. We have uh, Ludicolo, Kyogre, Kingdra. We're leading Togekiss on the left, Steelix in the middle, Miss Magius on the right. Togekiss is Walkenberry to prevent any uh, Thunders, and Steelix is Choppleberry to prevent any uh, Focus Blast. In this position, all three of their Pokemon see Surf as a kill on Steelix. We're going to Nasty Plot Togekiss, Wide Guard our own side, Trick Room. They're obviously a Swift Swim Pokemon, so they're definitely going to be faster than us. So we're going to reverse the speed order. There's a second Surf. And the Muddy Water. Perfect. Grass Knot to kill the Kyogre. We're going to swap the middle for Hydreigon. And we're going to Moonblast the Kingdra. The only attack we're going to be taking ourselves is... Probably a Surf and Ludicolo. Okay, perfect. Moonblast kills the Kingdra. Beautiful. Okay, Palkia right side. Uh, that's fine. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to Air Slash, remove the Ludicolo. It's probably just Ice Beam into Hydreigon. What we're going to do here is Draco Meteor into Palkia. And we're going to Energy Ball the Rindo Berry off of the Gastrodon. Surf is fine. Because we outspeed the other two side Pokemon. This is a kill. Oh yeah, Hydreigon's Iron Ball, by the way. Which means it underspeeds everything on their team. Which means it's first in the turn order. Okay, that's a little concerning. Okay, so Blastoise is going to Mega Evolve into it with Mega Launcher and probably attack my Hydreigon. What we're going to do here is probably we're going to have to kill the Gastrodon first, protect our Hydreigon, and then swap the right side into Politoed. Just because I really don't want it taking another Surf here. Gastrodon dies. Beautiful. So what I think, I think what we're going to do here is Air Slash with the uh, Togekiss. Or Sphere Dragon Pulse, we go into Miss Magius on the middle. I don't know why you would do that into me, but okay. Perfect.
Beautiful. Nice and easy. Here's Drasna in a single battle. Ironically, it's not actually the easiest. It's actually like decently hard. This is Choice Scarf uh, Hydreigon. So it's very likely to just U-turn out or switch out. So we're just gonna react and just Icy Wind, whatever comes in. Okay, it, it, it chooses to stay in, that's fine. <clears throat> so with itself lo being locked into Dragon Pulse, we're going to go to Miss Magius. Here, they have the possibility to swap out, and if that happens, then we just, like, we can't really deal with it. Moonblast to kill. That's fine. So here's Giratina. Uh... So Airlock removes the rain. This might be Dragon Dance. This could also be V-Create. Okay. Now, please see the V-Create into my Politoed. Yeah. Perfect. Now we can bait it into using V-Create. Um, what's going to happen is it's going to lower its own speed and... Oh shit, okay. Speed and defenses. That's fine. We're gonna Moonblast. This thing is probably gonna... Oh, it does go for V-Create. Okay. This is Hydreigon. Uh, okay, so it's faster than us now. That's Draco. Flinch is not good. Second one. Okay, let's see how many games you want to play, Hydreigon. Oh my god. So from this position, I'm pretty sure it's just going to see the Draco Meteor as a kill here. So what we're going to do is just U-turn out, we're faster, deal some damage, perfect, and then go to someone that can take the Draco. Nice. I'm pretty sure, yeah, we're gonna go Politoed on this Flare Blitz. <sighs> oh fuck, okay. It's got a 70 per we have a 70% chance of living, so... Give me those odds, come on. I mean... I, 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 we just have to hope here. <laughs> so this is Wickstrom in a rotation battle, which I arguably, I don't really know how to navigate these rotation battles, so I'm probably gonna have to treat it like a single battle with every single like interaction that uh, existing. Mystical fire on, yeah, okay. So this is probably grass knot. They're likely to swap back to cleft key. So let's mystical fire for that. Inter oh fuck, sorry. For that interaction. You piece of shit. Let's go flamethrower. Okay. Thank god. Probably going for a sacred sword. But it could also swap to... Empoleon for Ice Beam. I'm gonna go Earthquake with Swampert then. Okay, let's go Mystical Fire with you then. Hold the power with. You piece of shit! Okay, thank god. Should this be Dragon Pulse, we'll go Earthquake. Okay. 
Okay. I think that they think I'll swap to Steelix, and so they're gonna go into Dialga and Earth Power. So what I'm gonna do is just Encore. <laughs> Because I'm pretty sure Earth Power with Dialga is the only thing that can threaten my Steelix. So what I'm going to go do now is go Steelix. No way you kill me. Yeah, no way you kill me. Beautiful. Beautiful. I knew it. Okay, got it. Yeah, I don't know why. I don't know why. I knew. I knew I was faster. Okay, man, that took a long time. That, Jesus, fuck, man. All right, here's Diantha, leading with Download Genesect. We're gonna be baiting the Iron Head into my Steelix, and then Steelix is gonna coil and set up and kill. This is gonna take a while. We're gonna go all the way as far as we can. We're gonna go as far as we can. We're plus five, plus six. I don't remember, I lost count. We're now gonna Fire Fang kill this thing. Yeah, minimal damage. Okay, this is gonna use, yeah, Focus Sash. It's gonna be a potion here because they're scumbags. So we can just get the kill with uh, another Earthquake. This is Whirlwind. Okay. That's fine. That's fine. We, are, we already have so much momentum, they literally cannot do anything else to us. We're so close, guys. We're so close. We're almost there. I can taste it. I can taste it. No point retaining onto this thing. No point holding onto this thing. <sighs> We're just gonna sack ourselves in Draco Meteor. We did it! We did it! Redemption for our Eternal X loss two years ago. Seven straight days of just playing this game. Eight hours. It's a fucking full-time job. Eight hours a day. Oh my god.